All right, so now that we've got the circles, what I want to do is create a new layer with exactly the same uh, circles. So I want to preserve the circles for uh, a later time, but I'm going to use another layer as the, the objects that I'm going to use to um, divide shapes. So I'm going to copy everything in this circles layer. So I'm just going to close the, the circles layer by clicking on this little icon to close. I don't need to see all the shapes inside. So clicking on the circles layer and then dragging down to the create new icon, that's actually going to copy that entire layer. So now I can Click, double click on that layer, the layer name, and then change the name to rings. Now I'm going to create a new layer named star. So click on new layer, and then double click on the name and name that layer star. So I want to create a guides layer and move all guides to this layer. So move the guides layer to be the bottom layer. So I already did that for the triangle. Um, that was if you were starting just with this artboard. So you can probably ignore that instruction for now. Now with the star layer selected and the stroke set to 100% black, and the fill set to none, uh, which is what we have. Select the line tool and drag from the center of the circles to the top of the largest circle to create a line. So I'm going to select the line segment tool and do just that. So with the command key, I, I have a, a circle selected. I just want to deselect that for now. So using the command key, even though I have the line segment tool selected, I can switch to the command key and I've got a cursor and I can click anywhere else to deselect. So I'll do that and let go. And now I'm going to place uh, the cursor right at the center of the artboard where the guides intersect and then click and drag up until I get to the top of the circle and then let go. So what I should have is if I've got my reference point selected as the center, um, right now I should probably move that reference point down to the bottom middle. And then I can see the bottom middle point is positioned at 300 uh, pixels <clears throat> on the x-coordinate and 300 sorry, 300 points on the x-coordinate and 300 points on the y-coordinate right at the center of the artboard, which is exactly what I want. And the height is 175 points, which is half of 350. So that's the kind of precision I want to see. If that's not what you have, you might want to um, type those values into the control bar at the top. So now that I have the line, created, I want to copy that line. So Command C copies it and then Shift Command V to paste in place. So if I open up the star layer I'm going to see two lines. Um, now the top one is selected because we've just pasted that one. So with the bottom middle reference point selected, we've already done that, set the height to half by typing slash 2 or forward um, divided by 2, right? So I can either go up to the height value at the top or in the pathfinder, or sorry, transform palette. So I'm going to use the height value in the control bar at the top and then type forward slash 2 right after 175 points and then enter, and that's going to automatically calculate for us 
one half of 175, which is 87.5 points. And we should see, if we turn off the larger line, we only have the smaller line selected now. Great. So that's what we want. Now select the longer line and select the rotate tool. All right, so I'm going to turn on the other line layer that I just turned off and select that. So I could do that by option clicking on that layer and that would select the lo longer line. Another way I could do that is with the direct selection tool or the selection tool. Let's just use the selection tool. I'm just clicking anywhere else to deselect and then clicking on the object with the selection tool. If you had the direct selection tool, you would hold down the option key and then click. Now we want to choose the rotate tool. So that's this. You can press R on your keyboard to select the rotate tool or click on the rotate tool icon over in the toolbar. And now position your cursor right over the center and holding down the option key, click with your mouse. So that should bring up the rotate dialog box. And what we want to do is enter 15 degrees. So type in 15 and then press the OK button. So what that does is rotate 15 degrees counterclockwise. Perfect. So now I want to select the shorter line. I can keep on using the, um, the rotate tool and use the command key to change to my selection tool. So if I use the command and option keys and then click on the smaller align, that'll make sure that I'm selecting all of the points in that line. Now I want to do the same thing as I did before, except this time I'm going to option click on the center and then type in 30 and then instead of OK, I'm going to click on copy. Now I've got two smaller lines, but one is rotated to 30 degrees. Perfect. So now I want to grab my direct selection tool. For this part, I'm going to turn off all of the rings and circles just so I can see what I'm doing with these paths and make sure that I'm not selecting anything else other than the, um, the paths on the star layer. So by option clicking on the uh, or command option clicking on the larger line, that allows me to select all of the points on that line. Now with the shift key selected, I can either uh, letting go of the command key, just holding down the shift key, I can click right on the top um, anchor point to deselect it. So now it should turn hollow, but the bottom point if I turn off guides command semicolon, I should be able to see that it's still solid at the bottom. That means that point is still selected. So I'm going to press the delete key and now I only have that top point left. So now I want to hold down the shift key. That allows me to select multiple objects or multiple points. So if I click on the top point of one of the smaller lines, then I can use the join command. So under the object menu, there's a path submenu, and there we can find the join command. As you can see here, the key command is uh, command J. So I can either uh, select this menu item by clicking on it and joining or 
let's do something different next time. This time I'm going to click and drag to create a marquee over the center points. So that's selecting the bottom points of these two lines, this line and this line, because they're right over top of each other. Now if I press Command J, now those three lines are all connected to each other. So now I can click and drag to create a marquee over these last two points that aren't select or er, joined and press command J when they're selected now I've got a closed path so that's exactly what I want at this point we can now turn on the rings layer and make sure the star path and the rings paths are all selected. So I could open up the rings layer and then using the shift key, holding the shift key down and the option key down, I click at the top of the rings layer. So right here beside the rings layer, that'll make sure all of the objects inside that layer are selected. So all of those circles or ellipses are now selected as well as the path, the single path now in the star layer. So now I'm gonna select the Pathfinder tool, the Pathfinder palette by clicking on the tab. And I should be able to see a number of options. So there's shape modes and there's Pathfinder modes. What I'm looking for is the Divide Pathfinder tool. So if I click on that, you'll see that everything now has moved up into a group inside the star layer. So because they're a group, I'm going to need to use my Direct Selection tool, which I already have selected. So I'm going to click anywhere else outside of the artboard objects that I have selected to deselect them. Now, using the Shift and Option keys, I'm going to click and then drag, but almost to the center, but not quite. I only want to select these circles. So click and drag and then let go. Now everything is selected except for everything within the star shape. If I press delete, what I should see is these objects are the only thing that are left over. Everything's been divided into these shapes. So that's exactly what I want. At this point, I'm going to stop and um, start another video just before I run out of time. And then we'll come back to how we're going to repeat this star all the way around to create the 12 points of Johann Itten's color star. So, um, stay tuned.